three, two, one. Hello and welcome back to the second annual Texas Private School Podcast Award Show. It's been a long time in the works, but we finally are here to present it to you. Walker, this year in, I didn't even introduce, introduce a second host of our show, Walker Lott. I'm sorry, I'm so excited just to get into this, but Walker, we this is the biggest task we undertake every year, but yep. it is without a doubt the most fulfilling, the most rewarding, and it gets the most engagement because we decided we wanted to produce something objective to recognize the athletes in private school football. What are your thoughts on, you know, just what this award show means? Yeah. I mean, it's another great year, another great season, all f- Five levels of classification in private school had amazing seasons. A lot of standout talent, guys we knew that were going to do really good, guys that showed up that we didn't know much about and had a great season. So a lot of just fun times and a lot of fun deciding, you know, uh, con- configuring what who wins what. And uh, I think another great season and another great award list of uh, guys who definitely deserve each award they are given. Absolutely. So I, I can't think between between all of us how much time went into this. It would hurt my brain to think so. I know we all sat down in a Panera Bread in Fort <laughs> Worth, I think, for I literally think we were there for at least seven hours. And that wasn't yeah. even one tenth of all the total work that went into this. But just I would just want everyone to know this isn't something that we just decide to kind of like pull up and do in like two hours, or maybe a day. There is so much research and so much work that goes into this. That's simply because we care this much. If you haven't realized already, almost what, like 55, 60 episodes in. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, I mean, man. I know it's wild. It means a lot to us. But with all that being said, I want to say right off the bat, thank you so much to everyone that sponsored this award show. This is obviously a large financial undertaking with getting these really nice awards that we we're really proud of. Obviously, there's a lot of funding that goes into that. This is not possible without your help and your contributions. And we just want to say a genuine thank you to everyone who sponsored. You're the reason that we can pull this off. With that being said, we're going to go into a quick rules recap, and then we'll get straight into the award show. What I mean by rules recap is just some little speculation or little stipulations just kind of to make everything make a lot more sense. I know we always put these things on Twitter and everyone freaks out when somebody's not, you know, nominated for a nominated for a position. Basically, you can only win one award. So that's really going to apply when somebody wins MVP, offensive player of the year or defensive player of the year, while they are most likely the best player at their position, we're not going to give them their position award because the MVP, the Offensive Player of the Year, and the Defensive Player of the Year supersedes the position-based award. Also, in terms of, you know, do we want to have some tr- transparency in how we present these awards and who gets them and why? Basically, the judgment, and it's not a clear-cut formula. We don't go strictly by stats because, you know, quite frankly, some districts are better than others. Some divisions are better than others. The judgment is based off a mixture of stats and performance. And I know that sounds vague. It's because it is. It's just stats aren't the entirety of the criteria of the criteria we consider. Some guys, everything they do isn't purely encapsulated by their stats. I mean, Walker, I know you yep. can speak more to this. What just what is your take on how we decide who gets what? I mean, I think it's like, yeah, of course, stats mean a lot, but some guys like a corner, for example, right? They might not have the amount of interceptions, but if they're locking some guy down and it's only uh, the offense can only go on one side of the field, that matters somewhat more than just stats, you know? So it's a whole different thing of, you know, how to balance it all out, especially like accolades as well. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to go into it, but we, I think we do it the best way we don't show any bias in what we do we take it from an analytical approach of guys we saw it with our own two eyes and are impressed with as well as stats that were at games and stuff like that that we're not even able to go to we watch film we you know we look through the film and so like all right i like that cat i like this you know stuff like that I, we take a lot of process in there and there's a reason that this is coming out in march and not like december 7th you know <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and I just I you you put it perfectly. That is that's the criteria that we take into account when making this award show. So at least I've said this. I can be at peace whenever a bunch of people come at me on Twitter for <laughs> for their guy not winning an award. Just go back. I'll put the timestamp of us saying this out and just kind of point you back to the criteria for the awards. But with all that fun stuff being said, Walker, it's time to get into the award show. And right off the bat, 
we're going to announce our all-private school team, starting with the all-private school first-team offense. At the two quarterback positions, we have Sawyer Anderson from Parish Episcopal and Brady Dever from Fort Bend Christian Academy. At running backs, we have A.J. Sibley from Plano Prestonwood and Micah Bell from Kincaid. As for the receivers, we have William Speedy Nettles from Dallas Christian, Brady Janusek from Argyle Liberty, and Jacob Trimble from Fort Worth Christian. At the tight end slot, we have another Fort Worth Christian Cardinal who is Jordan Green. At the offensive lineman positions, we have Sam Liu from Parrish, Bennett Warren from Fort Bend Christian, Aiden Gilmore from Parrish, Charlie Johnson from Fort Worth All Saints, Jackson McNeff from Prestonwood, Dante Lewis from St. Thomas, and Sam Stone from St. Michael's Christian Academy. That is your all-private school first-team offense. Walker, if you would take us away with the second-team offense. Yeah, going to the second-team offense, we have quarterback Carson Gordon from Bel Air Episcopal, quarterback Back Townsend from Lubbock Christian, Running back Marcus Ramon Edwards from Trinity Christian School, Lubbock. Uh, running back Gage Barrera from Victoria St. Joseph. Wide receiver Ricky Gonzalez from Antonio Prep in San Antonio. Wide receiver Caden Lehu from Arlington Grace Prep Academy. Wide receiver Brian Domino from Fort Bend Christian. Tight end Braden Flowers from Central Catholic in San Antonio. Offensive lineman Zachary Curtis from Bishop Lynch. Porter Nix from Dallas Christian. Joshua Cobb from Midland Christian. Uh, Keller Davis from the Woodlands Christian Academy and offensive lineman Will Scott from the Fort Worth Trinity Valley School. The all-purpose is Luke Carney from Dallas Christian and the kicker Nick Angerstein from Hallsville Sacred Heart. Fantastic. As for the all-private school honorable mention offense, at the quarterback positions, we have Ethan Gallagos from Brownsville St. Joseph and Gavin Parkhurst from Trinity Valley. At the running back positions, we have Seth Swarzynski from Munster Sacred Heart and Johan Cardenas from Houston St. Thomas. At the receiver positions, we have Cole Allen from Houston St. John's, Kyler Sullivan from John Cooper, and Elijah Kaysen from First Baptist. At tight end, we have Carter Bra from Austin Hyde Park. At the offensive lineman positions, we have Jesus Pequeno from Parrish, Hunter Mastin from TCS, Colin Witt from Episcopal, Anthony Pellerin from St. Thomas, John Talpit from Southwest Christian. At the all-purpose position, we have Jalen Talton from Grace Prep, and at kicker, we have Troop O'Neill from Prestonwood. Awesome, and I guess we move on to the first-team all-private school defense. Of course, we start out with the Michigan man himself, Enal Etta from Covenant Christian. Trey Williams, the Stanford commit uh, from Parish Episcopal. Max Granville, the Fort Bend Christian. James Cave from Parish Episcopal. Going to the linebackers, we have Cooper Malin from Parish Episcopal. Uh, we have Cooper Malin from Parish Episcopal. Hudson Lunsford from Plano Prestonwood. Connor Tallis from Fort Bend Christian. And Seth Scott from Parish Episcopal. Going to the DBs, you have Daniel Demery from Parish Episcopal. William Speedy Nettles from Dallas Christian, Kevin Doddard from Fort Worth Lake Country Christian, and DB Josh Johnson from the Woodlands Christian Academy. Another, The last DB is Antonio Hall from Nolan Catholic in Fort Worth. And the punter, just like for kicker, Sam Stone, St. Michael's, makes the first team all defense. Fantastic. The champ champ for Sam Stone. As for the all private school second team defense, we have for the defensive lineman Caleb Mitchell Irving from Parrish, Jack Harwell from Trinity Christian Academy, Reeves Baller from Liberty, Philip Bazemore from Dallas Christian, Jack Ward from St. Thomas, Robert Sanders from Fort Worth All Saints as the linebackers, Colin Nicholson from Episcopal School of Dallas, and Carson Berger from John Cooper. As for the DBs, we have Carter Stoudemire from Prestonwood, Kobe Sellers from Fort Bend Christian, Trey Turner from Liberty, Braylon Thompson from Bel Air Episcopal, Javant Williams from Fort Worth All Saints, and rounding out the all-private school second team defense at the punter position, Nick Angerstein from Hallettsville Sacred Heart. And now rounding out all the private school teams, we have honorable mission defense with Jason Ota from uh, Bel Air Episcopal. Aiden Allen from Houston St. Pius, Corian Tank Thomas from Arlington Oak Ridge School, Alex Harrelson from Fort Worth Christian, linebackers we have Jake and Maynard from Fort Worth Trinity Valley, Kyle Cormorgan from Houston Second Baptist, Brady Haas from Hallettsville Sacred Heart, Jacob Wilburn from Austin Regents. Now we go to the DBs. We have Brady Janusek from Argyle Liberty, 
DB Caleb Davis from Houston St. Thomas, Zane Tolliver from Dallas Christian, Hunter McCoy from the Weatherford Christian, uh, and Kamsi Arenza from Parish Episcopal. And rounding out is punter Preston Kyle from Houston St. Pius. And those are your all private school teams from the 22 season. Fantastic. So let's get into the individual award, starting with TAPS Division I Coach of the Year, starting with Daniel Novikov, Donnie Yantist, Blake Fuschek, and KJ Williams. And your TAPS Division I Coach of the Year is Donnie Yantist from Prestonwood Christian. Despite preseason uncertainty, the first-year Lion takes Prestonwood all the way to the D1 title game. Congratulations to Coach Donnie Yantis on the Texas Private School Podcast Coach of the Year. <clears throat> Moving on to Newcomer of the Year, your finalists are Legend Howell, Caleb Mitchell Irving, Dante Lewis, and Maddox Reed. And the TAPS Division I Newcomer of the Year, Legend Howell from Bishop Lynch. The freshman exceeded all set expectations and has unlimited potential moving forward. So congratulations to Legend Howell from Bishop Lynch on the Texas Private School Podcast Newcomer of the Year. Now moving on to the Texas Private School Podcast Division I Underclassman of the Year, your finalists being T.K. Shaw from TCA Addison, D.C. Crane from Parrish, Anthony Pellerin, and Jack Harwell. Your Texas Private School Podcast Underclassman of the Year is Jack Harwell from Trinity Christian Addison. The sophomore put up a monster stat line and was a terror to opposing quarterbacks all season long. Congratulations to Jack Harwell on the Texas Private School Podcast Underclassman of the Year. Moving on to quarterback of the year, your finalists being Sawyer Anderson, Dante Lewis, Jace Toscano, and Cole Matsuda. And the Texas Private School Podcast quarterback of the year, Dante Lewis from Houston St. Thomas. The Shadow Creek transfer burst onto the scene, throwing for over 3,000 yards and 37 touchdowns. Well-deserving. Congratulations, Dante Lewis, on the Texas Private School Podcast quarterback of the year. Now, as for the Texas Private School Podcast running back of the year, the finalists being A.J. Sibley, Johan Cardenas, Maddox Reed, and D.K. Smittick. And the Texas Private School Podcast running back of the year, A.J. Sibley from Prestonwood Christian. With 2,300 yards and 21 touchdowns, Sibley etches his name into the book of the great private school running backs. Congratulations, A.J. Sibley, on the Texas Private School Podcast running back of the year. Moving forward to receiver of the year, the finalists being Derek Usbio, Ricky Gonzalez, Antonio Hall, and Riley Strode. And the Texas Private School Podcast Receiver of the Year, Ricky Gonzalez from Antonian Prep. Gonzalez leads Antonian to a district championship and with 71 grabs for 1,300 yards, shows there's nothing he can't catch. Congratulations, Ricky Gonzalez, on the Texas Private School Podcast Receiver of the Year. Moving on to Defensive Back of the Year, the finalists being Antonio Hall, Daniel Demery, Carter Stoutmeyer, and Caleb Davis. In the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Back of the Year, Antonio Hall from Nolan Catholic. With five interceptions and no touchdowns allowed, anything within 20 yards of Hall was a restricted airspace this season. Congratulations, Antonio Hall, the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Back of the Year. Now we will look at Linebacker of the Year, the finalists being Jack Ward, Seth Scott, Cooper Malin and Hudson Lunsford. The Texas Private School Podcast Linebacker of the Year, Cooper Malin from Parish Episcopal. With 157 tackles, Malin served as an anchor to the best defense in the state, and there was nothing that he couldn't wrap up. Congratulations, Cooper Malin, the Texas Private School Podcast Linebacker of the Year. Now, as for offensive line, the finalists being Sam Liu, Aiden Gilmore, Jackson McNeff, and Zach Curtis. And the Texas Private School Podcast Offensive Lineman of the Year, Sam Liu from Parish Episcopal. The junior has developed into one of the better offensive line prospects in the state and mauled opposing defensive linemen all year. Congratulations, Sam Liu from Parish Episcopal, the Texas Private School Podcast Offensive Lineman of the Year. Now, as for defensive linemen of the year, the finalists being Caleb Mitchell Irving, Jack Harwell, James Cave, and Aiden Allen. 
and the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Lineman of the Year, James K. from Parish Episcopal. The Yale commit was arguably the most underrated player in the state all year, but never once underperformed. Congratulations to James K. from Parish Episcopal, the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Lineman of the Year. Now, moving into special teams, special teams player of the year, the finalists being Troop O'Neill, Dylan Sherman, Preston Kyle, and Michael Taylor. And the Texas Private School Podcast special teams player of the year, Troop O'Neill from Prestonwood Christian. Back-to-back, Troop O'Neill's iron boot was vital in the Lions' success again this season. Congratulations to Troop O'Neill from Prestonwood Christian, the Texas Private School Podcast special teams player of the year. Now, as for Hart Award, we're not going to announce finalists because there is only one per category. So the Texas Private School Podcast Division I Hart Award goes to Luke McGarry from Prestonwood Christian, playing both sides of the ball and switching positions for the better of the team. No one is more deserving of this award than Luke McGarry. So congratulations, Luke McGarry from Prestonwood Christian, the Texas Private School Podcast Hart Award winner. Now, moving on to the Superlative Award, starting with Offensive Player of the Year, your finalists being Sawyer Anderson from Parish Episcopal, A.J. Sibley from Prestonwood, Dante Lewis from Houston St. Thomas, and Jace Toscano from Antonian Prep. In the Texas Private School Podcast, Offensive Player of the Year, Sawyer Anderson from Parish Episcopal. No sophomore slump for the Parish Gunslinger as he secures his second state championship in as many years. Congratulations, Sawyer Anderson, the Texas Private School Podcast Offensive Player of the Year. Now, moving on to the defensive side of the ball for Defensive Player of the Year, your finalists being Trey Williams, Cooper Mayland, Antonio Hall, and Carter Stoutmeyer. The Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Player of the Year goes to Trey Williams from Parish Episcopal. Four years, four championships. Trey Williams goes down as one of the greatest to ever do it. Congratulations, Trey Williams, the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Player of the Year. And now, the moment everyone has been waiting for, the TAPS Division I MVP as judged by the Texas Private School Podcast. So, the finalists being Daniel Demery, Trey Williams, A.J. Sibley, and Antonio Hall. And the Texas Private School Podcast TAPS Division I MVP goes to Daniel Demery from Parish Episcopal. The Ole Miss commit was the best when the lights were the brightest and cemented his legacy in Texas high school football. I did not say Texas private school football. I said Texas high school football. Congratulations to Daniel Demery from Parish Episcopal, the TAPS Division I Most Valuable Player. So that being said, that will wrap our, up our Division I awards. Walker, will you take us away with Division Two? Absolutely. As we move on to Division Two. Uh, we're just going to start it out strong and we go with coach of the year and the nominees are for taps division two coach of the year, Jason Witten, Jordan black, Nathan slaughter and Phil Dawson. And the taps division two coach of the year is Jordan black from Fort Bend Christian. What a year for Fort Bend Christian. And he uh, leads the leads them all after years of hard rock money. The people's champion scales the D two mount, mountain congrats to Jordan black. Now going to the newcomer of the year. Here are the nominees. Jalen Spriggs from Fort Worth All Saints. Quinn Murphy from Austin Regents. Simeon Garner from Tyler Grace Community. Christian Wells from Fort Worth Southwest Christian. And the winner of Newcomer of the Year in Taps Division 2 is Jalen Spriggs from Fort Worth All Saints. Spriggs provided an instant impact and was invaluable to the state runners-ups in Fort Worth All Saints. What a season for him. I believe he's going to Southwestern, so congrats and have a great time there. As the next award is Underclassman of the Year in Taps Division 2, the nominees are Max Granville from Fort Bend Christian, Brady Janusek from Argyle Liberty, Quinn Murphy again from Austin Regents, and Kobe Sellers from Fort Bend Christian. And the winner is Max Granville from Fort Bend Christian Academy. The sophomore was unable to be contained all season, is providing is proving himself as a blue chip prospect in a loaded 2025 class in Texas. Uh, great, great season, and did it when it was impactful in the in the Regents game and also the state championship. Big, big season for him. Now, looking at quarterback of the year for Taps Division Two, the nominees are. 
Quinn Murphy from Austin Regents, Hogan Nelson from Fort Worth Christian, Ethan Gallagos from Brownsville St. Joseph, and Sheldon King from Bishop Dunn. And the winner of Taps Division II Quarterback of the Year goes to Hogan Nelson. Now, Argyle Liberty, man, had 3,000 yards and 36 touchdowns at his time at Fort Worth Christian. The sophomore lit it up all year for the Cardinals. Congratulations. Now, going to our running back of the year, here are the nominees. Ryan Leslie from the Woodlands Christian Academy. Jeremiah Horn from Bishop Dunn. Antoine Polk from Fort Worth Southwest Christian. Gage Barrera from Victoria St. Joseph. And the winner of running back of the year for Taps Division Two is Gage Barrera from Victoria St. Joseph. 26 touchdowns on the year is reason alone to select the St. Joseph Freight Train as D2 running back of the year. Great season for him. Turn on the tape and you can see why. Now, going to the Taps Division Two receiver of the year, we have Brian Domino from Fort Bend Christian. Jacob Trimble from Fort Worth Christian. Brady Janusek from Argyle Liberty. And Jackson Smith from the Regent School of Austin. And the receiver of the year for Taps Division Two is Brady Janusek from Argyle Liberty. The sophomore turned heads all year and only has room to grow under this Liberty system. A D1 prospect for sure on that Argyle team. Excited to see his future. Now, we go to the defensive back of the year for Taps Division Two, And here are the nominees. Kobe Sellers from Fort Payne Christian. Javant Williams from Fort Worth All Saints. Trey Turner from Argyle Liberty, and Josh Johnson from the Woodlands Christian Academy. And the winner of Divisive Back of the Year is Josh Johnson for the Woodlands Christian Academy. After five interceptions, you would think opposing teams would stop throwing your way. But regardless, Johnson records nine on the year, well-deserving of the DB spot this season. Congrats to Josh Johnson. Now, moving into Linebacker of the Year, here are the nominees. Jacob Wilburn from the Regent School of Austin. Lloyd Lewis from Bishop Dunn. Kyle Cormorgan from Second Baptist. And Robert Sanders from Fort Worth All Saints. And the winner of Linebacker of the Year is Robert Sanders from the Fort Worth, Fort Worth All Saints. The Prince of the Commit did everything for the Saints. 100 tackles, 20 TFLs, 11 sacks, 4 interceptions, and 3 forced fumbles. I mean, who else could you pick after a sensational year for Fort Worth All Saints, especially in the playoffs? Now, we move into Offensive Line of the Year, and here are the nominees. Josh Cobb from Midland Christian. Bennett Warren from Fort Bend Christian. Charlie Johnson from Fort Worth All Saints. And Keller Davis from TWCA. A very stacked list, I might add, but you can only have one winner, and the winner is Charlie Johnson from Fort Worth All Saints. It was said that Johnson's transition to center is what propelled this All Saints team to new heights. And when you watch the tape, you know why. Great person and great player. Congrats to Charlie Johnson. Now, for the defensive lineman of the year, here are the nominees for Taps Division Two: Max Granville from Fort Bend Christian. Reeves Baller from Argyle Liberty. Alex Harrelson from Fort Worth Christian. And Jaw Griffin from the Austin St. Michaels. But there can only be one, and the winner is Reeves Baller from Argyle Liberty. With 100 tackles and 18 sacks, the Tulsa commit rained terror on opposing quarterbacks night in and night out. I guess he was a baller. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. Oh. Anyways, now going to special teams of the year, here are the nominees. Sam Stone from St. Michael's. Michael Stump from Argyle Liberty. John Wyatt Painter from Woodland Christian Academy, and Blake Harmon from Tyler Grace Community. And the winner of Special Teams Player of the Year is Sam Stone from St. Michael's in Austin. The Boston College Commit had lofty expectations coming into the year and met them and then some. I guess that's it. the Stone DNA just runs very well in the special teams thing, but congratulations, Sam Stone. Wish you the best of luck at Boston College. Now, let's go to the Hart Award, where... Uh, no man, I think, this season defined coming back and having that winner's mentality better than Trace Harris from Frisco, our award winner. Coming back from a potentially career-ending injury to help his team, no one showed more heart this season than Trace Harris. We wish you the best of luck at Ole Miss. Great season, great person. Congratulations, man. Now, let's go to the big ones. Offensive Player of the Year for Taps Division Two. The nominees are Brady Dever from Fort Bend Christian. Sheldon King from Bishop Dunn, Hogan Nelson from Fort Worth Christian, 
and Ethan Gallagos from Brownsville, St. Joseph. And the winner of TAPS Division II Offensive Player of the Year, Ethan Gallagos from Brownsville, St. Joseph. With 4,000 yards and 46 touchdowns, the Brownsville product put on one of the most statistically impressive performances we ever seen. Ethan Gallagos came in this season and proved why he was the Offensive Player of the Year this year. Uh, congratulations to the kid down in Brownsville. Now, moving to Defensive Player of the Year, the nominees are Connor Tallis from Fort Bend Christian, Reeves Baller from Argyle Liberty, Kyle Cole Morgan from Second Baptist, and Robert Sanders from Fort Worth All Saints. And the winner of Defensive Player of the Year. But Connor Tallis from Fort Bend Christian, 200, I want to, I want to, everyone listening here, 231 tackles, 40 tackles for loss. Golly. Connor Tallis records one of the best defensive seasons of Texas private school football history and goes out a champion. What a season. And he proved it, especially in that playoff run, especially against Fort Worth All Saints. What a season for Connor Tallis. Congratulations to the kid. And I believe he's going to John Hopkins. I just I saw him tweet out that out the other day. Congratulations and best of luck. Now, going to the big one. Taps Division II MVP. Here are the nominees. Brady Dever from Fort Bend Christian. Robert Sanders from Fort Worth All Saints. Brady Janusek from Argyle Liberty. And Kyle Core Morgan from Houston Second Baptist. But we can only have one. And the winner of the Taft Division II Most Valuable Player is Brady Dever from Fort Bend Christian. On his revenge tour, no one came and took it from the Brown commit. Sensational season, 3,000 plus yards, many of touchdowns, and played a phenomenal playoff campaign, beating Regents, beating Fort Worth All Saints. It was just an impressive run from the Brown commit. Congratulations to Brady Dever, our Taft Division II Most Valuable Player. Absolutely. I will add Brady Dever is arguably the most fierce competitor I've ever watched on a football field. So well deserving for the Brown commit to take home Taps Division two MVP. Now moving on to Taps Division three, starting with coach of the year. Here are your nominees. Mike Wheeler from Dallas Christian, Chris Hogan from Cypress Christian, Mike Harrison from San Antonio Holy Cross and Kevin Spiller from Trinity Christian Lubbock. And the TAPS Division Three Coach of the Year, Mike Wheeler from Dallas Christian. Back-to-back -back for the Texas high school football legend, not Texas private school football, Texas high school football. Congratulations to Mike Wheeler from Dallas Christian, the Texas private school podcast, Division Three Coach of the Year. Now moving on to Newcomer of the Year, the nominees being Zach Hernandez, Kyle Prazak, Rain Broadway, and Keaton Spangler. The Texas Private School Podcast Newcomer of the Year is Zach Hernandez from Dallas Christian. We said before the season even started, the Rockwell transfer would be a problem, and boy was he. An integral piece of this Dallas Christian State title run. Congratulations to Zach Hernandez. Now moving on to underclassmen of the year, we have John Acosta from San Antonio Holy Cross, Logan Fritcher from Geneva School of Bernie, Warren Hodek from Cypress Christian, and Bryce Prince from Grace Prep. And your Texas Private School Podcast Underclassman of the Year, Logan Fritcher from Bernie. All state honors don't do enough in describing the potential of the defensive lineman from Geneva Bernie, who had a standout sophomore campaign. Congratulations to Logan Fritcher, the Texas Private School Podcast Underclassman of the Year. Now, moving on to Quarterback of the Year, the nominees being Jalen Talton from Grace Prep, Maxwell Landrum from Cypress Christian, Jonah McCowan from the Brook Hill School, and Gibby Alvarado from San Antonio Holy Cross. And your Texas Private School Podcast Quarterback of the Year, Jalen Talton from Grace Prep. A 40-touchdown season displays why Talton has been one of the best gunslingers in the land over the past couple seasons, as his swan song is one to remember. Congratulations, Jalen Talton, on the Texas Private School Podcast Quarterback of the Year. Now, staying in the backfield, transitioning to running back of the year, the nominees being Marcus Ramon Edwards, Joe Angel Perez, Zach Hernandez, and Noah Harbour. And your Texas Private School Podcast Running Back of the Year, 
is Marcus Ramon Edwards from Trinity Christian Lubbock. The Texas Tech commit rushed for 1,500 yards and 31 touchdowns and is poised to make waves in Lubbock. Congratulations, Marcus Ramon Edwards, the Texas Private School Podcast Running Back of the Year. Now, moving to Receiver of the Year, your nominees being Xavier Garza, Caden Lehu, Kyle Prazak, and Noah Hill. And your Texas Private School Podcast Receiver of the Year, Caden Lehue from Grace Prep. Lehue is another underrated gem out of Arlington, amassing 1,100 yards and 16 touchdowns on the year. He passed the eye test live as well, making play after play. Congratulations to Caden Lehue, the Texas Private School Podcast Receiver of the Year. Now, switching sides of the ball, we will go to the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Back of the Year, the nominees being Kevin Doddard, Zane Tolliver, Eli Reeves, and Ben Golick. And the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Back of the Year is Kevin Doddard from Fort Worth Lake Country Christian. Leading the nation in interceptions is certainly enough reason to win defensive back of the year, and Doddard locked down his side all year. Expect big things from him with Fort Worth All Saints next season. Congratulations to Kevin Doddard from Fort Worth Lake Country on the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Back of the Year. Now, transitioning to linebacker of the year, we have Zach as finalists. We have Zach Anthony, George Vina, Cade Sink, and Marcus Perez. And your Texas Private School Podcast Linebacker of the Year, Zach Anthony from Trinity Christian Lubbock. With almost 100 tackles for the Lions defensive leader, Anthony was a force to be reckoned with throughout the year. He also picked a pretty solid college to go play ball at, if I do say so myself. So good luck at Tyler Junior College, Zach Anthony, and congratulations on the Texas Private School Podcast Linebacker of the Year. Now, looking at Offensive Lineman of the Year, your finalists being Hunter Maston, Cole Burke, Porter Nix, and Nolan Johnson. And your Texas Private School Podcast Offensive Lineman of the Year is Hunter Maston from Trinity Christian Lubbock. Maston was a stalwart on the Lions' offensive line and made a habit of punishing opposing defenders with a ruthless nature. Congratulations, Hunter Maston, the Texas Private School Podcast Offensive Lineman of the Year. Now, transitioning to the defensive side of the trenches, the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Lineman of the Year finalist, Philip Bazemore from Dallas Christian, Logan Fritcher from Geneva School of Bernie, Cornelius Bissong from Pantigo, and Devontae High from Dallas Christian. And your Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Lineman of the Year is Philip Bazemore from Dallas Christian. My first introduction to Bazemore was hearing that he broke a Dallas Christian bench press record with 420 pounds this summer. Number one, that's more than my deadlift, which is embarrassing. And he plays exactly the way you would expect a 420-pound bencher to play. Absolute monster. Congratulations to Philip Bazemore, the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Lineman of the Year. Now, transitioning to special teams, the Texas Private School Podcast Special Teams Player of the Year finalists include Tyler Madsen, Luke Pivonka, Brody Creek Johnson, and Clayton Brandenburg. And the Texas Private School Podcast Special Teams Player of the Year is Tyler Madsen from Trinity Christian Lubbock. With 50 PATs and 59 total points, Madsen was an invaluable, underrated piece to this Lions squad. So congratulations, Tyler Madsen, on the Texas Private School Podcast Special Teams Player of the Year. Now, into the superlatives, the Texas Private School Podcast Heart Award goes to Maxwell Landrum from Cypress Christian. Not many players go both ways, let alone quarterbacks. But Landrum did whatever was asked of him the entire year, leading Cypress Christian to a title game in which he contributed at linebacker as well as quarterback. We have a hit stick from that game on our Twitter feed. That is one of the best plays I've seen all year. All that being said, congratulations, Maxwell Landrum, the Texas Private School Podcast Heart Award winner. Now, into the big ones. The Texas Private School Podcast Offensive Player of the Year nominees are Jalen Talton from Grace Prep, Luke Carney from Dallas Christian, Marcus Ramon Edwards from Trinity Christian Lubbock, and Maxwell Landrum from Cypress Christian. 
and the Texas Private School Podcast Offensive Player of the Year in Division Three goes to Luke Carney from Dallas Christian. The 2022 Underclassman of the Year takes a huge leap forward in his sophomore year and is now establishing himself as a coveted dual threat recruit in 2025. Congratulations, Luke Carney, on the Texas Private School Podcast Offensive Player of the Year. Now on the defensive side of the ball, the Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Player of the Year nominees include Enal Etta from Covenant Christian, Zach Anthony from Trinity Christian, Speedy Nettles from Dallas Christian, and Kevin Dodder from Lake Country Christian. The Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Player of the Year goes to Enal Etta from Covenant Christian. The Michigan commit is one of the most dominant pass rushers in recent memory, and with 122 tackles, 32 tackles for loss, and 18 sacks, who else could we give this award to? Enal Etta, congratulations. The Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Player of the Year. Best of luck in Michigan. Now, the one to trump all awards, the TAPS Division Three Most Valuable Player. The nominees include... Speedy Nettles from Dallas Christian, Marcus Ramon Edwards from Trinity Christian, Maxwell Landrum from Cypress Christian, and Luke Carney from Dallas Christian. I'll let that breathe a little bit. The TAPS Division III MVP, as judged by the Texas Private School Podcast, is William Speedy Nettles from Dallas Christian. Nettles came into the season with a target on his back and ended up hunting his competition instead, well-deserving for one of the best prospects in the entire state. Congratulations, Will Nettles, the Texas Private School Podcast, TAPS Division Three Most Valuable Player. We now move on to TAPS Division Four. We start off with Coach of the Year. Of course, we start off with Chris Softley from Lubbock Christian, Coach Jake Waxmith from Shiner St. Paul, Corey Washington from Brazos Christian and Eric Allen from Houston Northam. And the winner is Chris Sobley from Lubbock Christian. The Eagle signal caller leads them to 12 wins and ultimately a state title. I'm excited to see the era of Chris Sobley at Lubbock Christian uh, to continue and excited for the future of that. Now, moving on to Newcomer of the Year. Uh, the nominees are Braden Bork from Weatherford Christian, Dominic Sadu Robinson from Dallas First Baptist, Jackson Caffey from Brazos Christian, and Rylan Alliance from Fort Worth Temple Christian. And the winner of Newcomer of the Year for Taps Division 4 is Braden Bork from Weatherford Christian. Uh, Braden Bork comes over from Weatherford High, and the Kangaroo has 2,300 yards and 30 touchdowns, as well as six interceptions, establishing the Weatherford Christian athlete as one of the best in Taps Division 4. Congratulations. Now, we move over to the underclassmen of the year, where we have Rome Stanford from Houston Northland. Dominic Sidhu Robinson from Dallas First Baptist, Brody Garner from Brazos Christian, and Maddox Caffey from Fort Worth Temple Christian. And the winner of Underclassman of the Year for TAPS Division 4 is Dominic Sidhu Robinson. A 4 5 40 and several high caliber offers prove that the freshman out of Dallas First Baptist is one of the top freshmen in the state, and he proved it this season. I'm excited to see the progression of him next season and in the future. Now, moving over to the quarterback of the year. The nominees are Cole Duty from Hallettsville Sacred Heart, Stone Walker from Houston Northland, Jacob Waxmith from Shiner St. Paul, and Garen James from Dallas First Baptist. And the winner of Quarterback of the Year in Taps Division 4 is Stone Walker from Houston Northland. The Fort Lewis commit led the Kigers to a district title and was virtually unstoppable in the year. Me and Wes both saw him this year and were very, very impressed by the kid. And he's one of the most underrated guys in all of te Texas private school football. Excited to see him next year. Congratulations, Stone Walker. Now, moving on to running back of the year, we have Zane Barta from Shatter St. Paul, Braden Borg from Weatherford Christian, Reagan Ragsdale from Central Texas Christian and Ryan Zrozinski from Munster Sacred Heart. And the winner of running back of the year for TAPS Division 4 is Ryan Zrozinski from Munster Sacred Heart. The junior back had lofty preseason expectations, but burst through them, cementing himself in the Sacred Heart off Sacred Heart record books. He's got one more year under his belt in the senior season. We're expecting a big, big thanks from Ryan Zrozinski. Excited for that next season. Now, moving on to Receiver of the Year, we have Nick Angerstein from Hallettsville Sacred Heart, Joseph Fernerhow from Lubbock Christian, 
Elijah Cation from Dallas vs. Baptist, and Ryan Burton from Brazos Christian. And the winner of Receiver of the Year in Taps Division 4 is Elijah Cason from Dallas First Baptist. Another exceptionally talented receiver out of Dallas First Baptist. Cason eclipsed 1,800 total yards, is poised for a monster senior campaign. We're really excited to see him grow uh, next season. Now, moving on to Defensive Back of the Year, we have Hunter McCoy from Weatherford Christian, Rome Stanford from Houston Northland, Caden Stringfellow from Central Texas Christian and Trent Brown from Shiner St. Paul. And the winner of Defensive Back of the Year for TAPS Division 4 is Trent Brown from Shiner St. Paul. With five interceptions of the year, Trent Brown locked down Division 4 all year and helped him back to a state championship appearance. Congratulations, Trent Brown. As we move on to Linebacker of the Year, the nominees are Brady Haas from Hallettsville Sacred Heart, Will Hawley from Lubbock Christian, Joshua Bonnerodin from Shiner St. Paul, and Maddox Caffey from Fort Temple Christian. And the winner is Will Hawley from Lubbock Christian. Hawley was a defensive leader for the Eagles squad and finishes a career with state champion, 110 tackles, four sacks, ta- six tackles for loss. A great, great season for the leader in Lubbock Christian. As we move on to Offensive Lineman of the Year, we look at the nominees. We see Will Hawley from Lubbock Christian, Carson McNabb from Shiner St. Paul, Cole Bunock from Hellensville Sacred Heart, and Eli Hess from Munster Sacred Heart. And the winner is Eli Hess from Munster Sacred Heart. With 15 pancakes and no sacks allowed, nothing got by the senior from Sacred Heart. We're excited to see him. Or Sorry. Uh, congratulations to Eli Hess from Munster Sacred Heart on a great senior campaign. Now we look at Defensive Lineman of the Year, where we have the nominees. Earl Danso from uh, Houston Northland. Luke Censoros from Fort Worth Temple Christian. Brody Gardner from Brazos Christian and Trishan Earns from Central Texas Christian. And the winner is Luke Censoros from Temple Christian. 76 tackles, 20 and a half tackles for loss and 12 sacks and a great season and terrorized quarterbacks all year and helped spark an immaculate turnaround for the Eagles. Um, congratulations, Luke. Now we look at special teams player of the year where we have the nominees of Ramsey Wade Sharara from Tom Bowl Rose Hill. Gibson Winchester from Weatherford Christian, Thomas Coughlin from Mercy Culture Prep, and Nick Angerstein from Hallettsville Sacred Heart. And the winner of Special Teams Player of the Year is Nick Angerstein from Hallettsville Sacred Heart. Recently offered by Air Force, the D1 talent was steady all season and will look to continue his success into his senior season. I remember we posted his 52-yarder game winner, so uh, that kid has a boot down in Taps Division Four. Now we look at the Hart Award. And the winner of our Hart Award for Taps Division 4 is Ryan Burton from Brazos Christian. A stand-up kid as well as a heck of a football player. The D4 Hart Award has to go to Mr. Brazos Christian. Congratulations to Ryan Burton from Brazos Christian. Now, uh, we, we go into the big awards where we have Offensive Player of the Year. And the nominees are Reagan Ragsdale from Central Texas Christian. Elijah Cation from Dallas First Baptist. Max Townsend from Lubbock Christian, and Hunter McCoy from Weatherford Christian. The Offensive Player of the Year for Taps Division 4 goes to Hunter McCoy from Weatherford Christian. The junior dual threat accounted for 3,200 yards and 45 touchdowns and led to the Alliance to an impressive season. Uh, Congratulations to Hunter McCoy. Weatherford was lucky to have him this year. Great, great season. Now we move over to Defensive Player of the Year where we see the nominees are Hunter McCoy from Weatherford Christian. Brady Haas from Hallettsville Sacred Heart, Will Hawley from Lubbock Christian, and Luke Censoros from T- Fort Temple Christian. And the winner of Defensive Player of the Year in Taps Division 4 goes to Brady Haas from Hallettsville Sacred Heart. Uh, the standout from Sacred Heart was a monster in the safety position and provided an invaluable impact for the Indians. Uh, very, very good year, and congratulations to Mr. Haas himself. Now we move on to the big one where we see that – Nominees for TAPS Division 4 MVP. And you see Bax Townsend from Lubbock Christian, Ryan Swazinski from Munster Sacred Heart, Hunter McCoy from Weatherford Christian, and Ryan Burton from Brazos Christian. And the winner of TAPS Division 4 MVP goes to Bax Townsend out of Lubbock Christian with almost 60 touchdowns, 
No one in the state was more productive than Bax Townsend, who ends his career a state champion. Congratulations, Mr. Townsend. Great, great season. A lot of fantastic candidates and award winner in TAPS Division Four. Regardless of classification, you will find talent in private school, and that list proves that without a shadow of a doubt. Now, moving on into the other division in private school, SPC 4A and 3A awards, starting off with Coach of the Year, the nominees being Eric DeHaven, Nathan Larned, Kevin Veltry, and Matt Morrison. And the Texas Private School Podcast SPC Coach of the Year goes to Nathan Larned from Kincaid. Despite all odds, Larned takes the Falcons back to back in SPC's premier division. Congratulations to Coach Larned. Now, moving on to Newcomer of the Year, the nominees being Stephen Gill from Houston St. John's, Dean Calhoun from John Cooper, Carson Gordon from EHS, and Andre Thompson also from EHS. The Texas Private School Podcast SBC Newcomer of the Year goes to Stephen Gill from Houston St. John's. With 2,400 yards and 27 touchdowns, Gill established himself as one of the top gunslingers in the entire state. Congratulations to Stephen Gill, the Texas Private School Podcast SBC Newcomer of the Year. Moving on into Underclassmen of the Year, the nominees being Dean Calhoun from John Cooper, Hutch Chipman from ESD, Cole Allen from St. John's, and Gavin Parkhurst from Trinity Valley. And the Texas Private School Podcast SPC Underclassman of the Year goes to Gavin Parkhurst from Fort Worth Trinity Valley. The master duelist led Trinity Valley to a state championship appearance, racking up 3,600 yards and 39 touchdowns on the season. Congratulations, Gavin Parkhurst, the Texas Private School Podcast SPC Underclassman of the Year. Moving on to quarterbacks, the nominees being Patrick Burke from ESD, Stephen Gill from St. John's, Vaughn McKeever from John Cooper, and Carson Gordon from EHS. The Texas Private School Podcast SPC Quarterback of the Year goes to Vaughn McKeever from the John Cooper School. McKeever exits high school football as a two-time state champion and maybe the best to ever do it at John Cooper. Congratulations, Vaughn McKeever, the Texas Private School Podcast quarterback of the year transitioning to running back the nominees being micah bell from kincaid robert riser from st john's colin nicholson from episcopal school of dallas and dean calhoun from john cooper and the texas private school podcast spc running back of the year goes to dean calhoun from john cooper Calhoun was integral to the Dragons' success on the year, posting over 1,000 yards and 19 scores. Congratulations, Dean Calhoun from John Cooper. Moving on to Receiver of the Year in the SPC, the nominees being Kyler Sullivan from John Cooper, Cole Allen from St. John's, Lane Leinbarger from EHS, and Blair Brennan from the Episcopal School of Dallas. The Texas Private School Podcast SPC Receiver of the Year goes to Cole Allen from Houston St. John's. Allen is one of the most dynamic players I have ever seen live, and this St. John's team is heavily reliant on both his talent and his effort, one of the better talents in the SBC division. Congratulations to Cole Allen, the Texas Private School Podcast, SPC Receiver of the Year. Moving on to the defensive side of the ball, the nominees for the defensive back of the year are Miles Rader from Kincaid, Jack McGarry from St. John's, Jordan Ellie Stewart from Houston Christian and Braylon Thompson from Episcopal. The Texas Private School Podcast SBC Defensive Back of the Year goes to Braylon Thompson from Bel Air Episcopal. Whether you needed a receiver locked down or a running back hick stick, Thompson got it done anyway necessary, leading Episcopal to a state title appearance. Congratulations to Braylon Thompson, the Texas Private School Podcast SBC Defensive Back of the Year. Now, looking at linebacker of the year, the nominees being Jacob Maynor from Trinity Valley, Dax Garza from St. John's, Colin Nicholson from Episcopal School of Dallas, and Carson Berger from John Cooper. The Texas Private School Podcast SPC linebacker of the year goes to Carson Berger from John Cooper. This championship defense does not function without Berger holding down the middle and recording 28 tackles for loss. 
goal line stand after goal line stand. Nobody in SPC did it better from the linebacker spot than Carson Berger. Congratulations, the John Cooper product, SPC linebacker of the year. Moving on to the offensive lineman of the year in the SPC, the nominees being Matthew Berguini from John Cooper, Will Scott from Trinity Valley, Colin Witt from Episcopal, and Billy Wheelis from Episcopal as well. The Texas Private School Podcast Offensive Lineman of the Year goes to Will Scott from Trinity Valley. The monster junior tackle made a habit of pile driving his opponents and kept his quarterback Parker safe and secure throughout the entire season. Congratulations, Will Scott from Trinity Valley. Now moving on to Defensive Lineman of the Year, the nominees being Jason Otaw from Episcopal, Justin McCray from Episcopal School at Dallas, Corian Thomas from Oak Ridge, and Hutch Coward from Episcopal. And the winner of the Defensive Lineman of the Year in the SPC goes to Corian Thomas from Oak Ridge, recording 17 tackles for loss on the year. 17. No one had any answer from the junior from Oak Ridge. Absolute monster season from Corian Thomas. Congratulations, the SPC Defensive Lineman of the Year. Now, on the special team side of the ball, the nominees for the special teams player of the year are Caden Perry from St. John's, Caden Castillo from Episcopal Bel Air, Grant Peterson from Kincaid, and Daniel Matthews from Episcopal School of Dallas. And the winner of the SBC special teams player of the year, as judged by the Texas Private School podcast, is Caden Castillo from Episcopal School of Bel Air. The senior had an iron leg the entire season and was a touchback machine, certainly well-deserving of this award. Congratulations to Caden Castillo. And the Hart Award for the SBC, as judged by the Texas Private School Podcast, goes to Blake Malouf from Dallas St. Mark's. Despite a tough season, Malouf was relentless with the way he played and was a threat to defensive backs all over the SPC. He racked up a crazy stat line and was well-deserving of the Hart Award, exemplary of what a team player should be. Congratulations to Blake Malouf from Dallas St. Mark's. Now, the Superlative Awards. The Offensive Player of the Year in the SPC. The nominees are Vaughn McKeever from John Cooper, Stephen Gill from St. John's, Cole Allen from St. John's, and Carson Gordon from Episcopal Bel Air. And the Texas Private School Podcast SPC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Carson Gordon from Bel Air Episcopal. The transfer had massive expectations on the year and surpassed them all, posting 3,100 yards and 37 touchdowns in a state runner-up appearance. Carson Gordon had a fantastic season. He 100% passed the eye test live and is well-deserving of the Texas Private School Podcast SPC Offensive Player of the Year. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, the nominees for the Texas Private School Podcast SPC Defensive Player of the Year are Colin Nicholson, Carson Berger, Braden Crow, and Miles Rader. And the Texas Private School Podcast SPC Defensive Player of the Year goes to Colin Nicholson from Episcopal School of Dallas. Nicholson's junior year was defined by tenacity and grit as he was impossible to scheme for or stop for any opposing staff. Congratulations, Colin Nicholson, absolute monster, the SBC Texas Private School Podcast Defensive Player of the Year. Now, for the one everyone's been waiting for, the SPC MVP. Your nominees being Micah Bell from Kincaid, Vaughn McKeever from John Cooper, Carson Gordon from Episcopal Bel Air, and Cole Allen from St. John's. The Texas Private School Podcast SPC MVP goes to none other than Micah Bell from Kincaid. No player had to do more than Micah Bell this season as the Notre Dame commit led Kincaid to the promised land. Congratulations, Micah Bell. One of the more dynamic players I have ever seen live. Well-deserving of SPC MVP. Also, we would be remiss to finish out SPC awards, and I meant to say this off the top, without thanking Jack Klosek and Alice Suede for their help. 
Um, these guys basically put this list together and selected all the finalists. Um, they have both been invaluable in their SPC coverage. We are very grateful to have both of them on the team and look out for more content from them in the future. But thank you guys so much for helping us put this, this section of the award show together. But Walker, with all that being said, I think we have about four overall awards that need to be given out. Yup. And I'll start it off with large school coach of the year. Uh, we have Jordan Black from Fort Bend Christian, Nathan Larned from the Kincaid School, Jason Witten from Argyle Liberty, and Phil Dawson from Austin Hyde Park. And the winner of large school coach of the year is Nathan Larned from Houston Kincaid. I mean, what a season for Kincaid, man. And we could talk, we could have talked hours about how amazing this season was for Kincaid, but when everything was kind of maybe not going their way at the start of the season, losing a couple games, Nathan Lonette always steadied the ship for Kincaid this season, keeping them positive, keeping them in the right mindset, and ultimately letting them go back to the state championship. What a season for Coach Lonette and the rest of this Kincaid group, um, making him one of the best to ever do it in the SBC ranks, and he shows it again this season. Congratulations to Coach Lonette and company. Now, moving on to Small School Coach of the Year, the nominees being Chris Softley from Lubbock Christian, Mike Wheeler from Dallas Christian, Matt Morrison from Fort Worth Trinity Valley, and Jake Walksmith from Shiner St. Paul. And the Texas Private School Podcast overall Small School Coach of the Year goes to Chris Softley from Lubbock Christian. I mean, who else really can you give it to in small schools? I know Wheeler and a lot of those other guys are very deserving, but the way Softley's offense ran this entire season and getting to see that live in the state championship game, you can tell the culture that is being developed at Lubbock Christian is a very, very good one. And one that I think has the potential to run division four for years to come. I mean, softly is such a great architect of that. And as long as he stays at Lubbock Christian, I think there'll be a state championship threat. So congratulations to Chris softly, the Texas private school podcast, small school coach of the year. Now moving on to large school player of the year. We have the nominees of Trey Williams from parish Episcopal. Daniel Dimry from Parish Episcopal, Brady Dever from Fort Bend Christian, and Micah Bell from the Houston Kincaid. And the winner is Micah Bell, our large school player of the year. The kid from Kincaid, man, what a season for him. Um, you know, he had he had a good team around him, but sometimes you just need the best player to just be the best player on the field every single time. And that's what uh Micah Bell did this year. What a season for Micah Bell. Um I think it came down to this one drive was in the state championship game. We've already talked about it. You can go back and watch it. But there was a Kincaid drive that started at 530 in the third quarter, and it ended at 129 in the fourth. And it ended up with three points, letting Kincaid basically win that game. I mean, it, he had other guys. Miles Raider was that. But Micah Bell himself almost – sustain that entire drive for them to win the state championship and if that just kind of shows you know that grit gritty determined player that michael bell is i mean i don't know how else to say it that drive submits himself as our large school player of the year congratulations michael bell and we wish you the best at notre dame this upcoming season Absolutely. And now rounding out our award show with the small school player of the year here are your nominees William Nettles from Dallas Christian, Bax Townsend from Lubbock Christian, Vaughn McKeever from John Cooper, and Marcus Ramon Edwards from Trinity Christian Lubbock. And your Texas Private School Podcast Small School Player of the Year goes to Bax Townsend from Lubbock Christian. I mean, just from a pure stat standpoint, and I know that we said it doesn't go purely based off stats, but you can't ignore the numbers back to Townsend put up 60 touchdowns, an ungodly amount of yards. I mean, and it's not – this isn't solely based off statistics. We saw him play in the state championship game, and he checked every box you wanted to see live. I mean, he is just such a dynamic player and such an absolute pure playmaker. You hate to compare people to Johnny Manziel, but, I mean, he he just gets things done. I mean, he's a fantastic player. 
obviously him and softly working together, both small school award winners, a sweet for love at Christian. I mean, it was just such a good team throughout the entire year, but none of this happens without Bax Townsend. So congratulations back to the Texas private school podcast, small school player of the year. And Walker, with that being said, that wraps up and puts a nice bow on the second annual, third annual, shoot, I think I said second annual off the top, I was wrong, the third annual Texas Private School Podcast Award Show. We can we can all take collectively a deep breath now. This is behind us. I say it like it's some like like laborious chore because it is in a way, but the reward that comes from it is the reason we continue to put this on. Just, I know you, I asked you off the top what this means to you, but just like, give us another brief explanation on, on why we do what we do. Yeah. I think I said it last year and the year before that, but the, the reason we do this is because we wish we had something like this back in high school that um, gave a true recognition to private school, did a deep dive into private school and really show that they cared about the awards that they did. And, you know, we put a lot of work into this. It's a lot of work behind the scenes. You know, I know it is in March, so it's a little later than the season and you're already prepping for next, but we really wanted to do our due diligence on this and show that we really care about private school sports and no better way to recognize private school sports by truly recognizing the athletes and coaches in private school sports. When it's a coach of the year, that means their whole entire staff, not just the head coach. When a guy wins the MVP, yes, he had a sensational season, but that means the whole team behind him helped him out to do that. Um, Yes, they're individualistic awards, but a lot of these things are you can't happen about without one other guy or another guy. So um, when a guy from your team wins an award, it should be the whole team that wins that award. And I think that's really special. So uh, congratulations to all the award winners. Uh, we'll distribute them out in the spring um, in the summer. Uh, like all we always do. Uh, so we'll be, we probably will be by your high school. Come say hi, come say hello before you head off to college or yeah, before you head and prep for your senior season or sophomore season or if, yeah, uh, whatever. So it's congratulations, all the award winners. Great season. Uh, one for the history books and uh, excited for the coming seasons ahead. So. Absolutely. Yeah, we are coming out of our winter hiatus. Most of that hiatus due to the work we put in for the awards show. We'll start ramping content back up. We think that's going to start with having weekly articles, at least on TXPS Media. So make sure you go stop by there, subscribe if you haven't already. But yeah, we're going to start rolling out weekly articles on a myriad of topics. And then, you know, we're going to all be at the Texas Relays very most likely in the coming months. And then, you know, seven on seven season starts and stuff like that. And before you know it, we're going to be into the 2023 football season. So I'm very excited for the runway we have leading up to the season. There's a lot of content opportunities and you're going to see not just me and Walker, but a lot of other guys that we've worked with, you know, I think be contributing for us. It's a very exciting time in Texas private school football. It's a very exciting time for the podcast and Texas private school media, what we're putting together. Um, it's it's going to be a good time. It's going to, this season is going to be better than the last. But with all of that being said, barring any additional comments, my name is Wes Tallis, and I've been half of your hosting crew. Walker Lott, the sharply dressed, might I add, Walker Lott, has been your other half of the hosting crew. We will see you in the next episode. See you later. Three, two, one. Here we go.